What's up? Hi, I'm Esther. I'm a professional chef, and these are my $116 ramen ingredients. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm a home cook, and these are my $11 ramen ingredients. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> Very familiar with this. I got it. Tonkatsu shoyu ramen with chasu pork and handmade noodles. Tonkatsu shoyu ramen is a creamy pork bone ramen flavored with shoyu, which is soy sauce. And this is the more popular ramen that you'll find in your local Japanese ramen shop. So I had some excellent ingredients to work with. I had a really nice piece of pork belly that I was gonna roll, braise, and torch to perfection, along with soy sauce. Everything on it's in a different language. <laughs> Marin. I've used this before to make like sushi rice, I think. Dried shiitake mushrooms, which are my favorite. Dried kombu. This feels like cardboard. This is hard. And of course, a little MSG. Where are the noodles? I was gonna make my noodles by hand using bread flour, filtered water with potassium carbonate, and cornstarch. All served in a beautiful tonkotsu broth that I made at my restaurant, Mokbar. It took a really long time to make, so you're welcome, Daniel. Topped with menma, an aromatic oil made from rendered chicken fat and a ramen egg. Daniel, you have a lot of work to do. Good luck. Okay. With Daniel's recipe, I have simpler ingredients. The ramen I was gonna make today was super simple. We have instant ramen noodles, eggs, garlic, ginger, scallions, soy sauce, and sesame seeds, and a rotisserie chicken. This is like a nice gift. These ingredients may seem simple, but with a little technique, we can make something really great. If I had to guess, these ingredients would probably cost about $13. $11. Wow, that's really cheap. So if I had to guess, I think this would cost, what, $95? Oh, 116. Per usual, there's no guidance here, no recipe, no nothing. I always thought that like ramen just all kind of came together in one bowl. Apparently it's like very compartmentalized in different parts. There's really five major components that make a really great ramen. It's the tare, which is a seasoning flavor, the broth, the noodles, the toppings and the aromatic oil. And if you have all those five elements right, then you have a really well-balanced ramen. Right off the bat, I, I don't know how to make noodles. I'm scared about these noodles. Can I call Rose? Rose! Daniel, how Good are you? you? Never made handmade noodles before. Is there any sort of tip you can tell me about how to make these not bad? <laughs> These are wheat-based noodles, and I'm gonna be honest, they're a little different than, say, making pasta. Okay. You're going to make what's called a kensui, a okay. combination of salt and water and something called potassium carbonate, which is an alkaline compound. And it's going to make the noodles a little bit harder so that they soak up all of the complex flavors that you get with a fabulous bowl of ramen. Once you have this kind of shaggy-looking mass, you're gonna put it into a Ziploc bag and just let it rest for at least 30 minutes. After that, you're gonna roll it out, make it nice and thin, fold it in half, put it in twice on each setting until you get to the thickness that you want, which should be about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half. Pretty soon you have a fabulous bowl of ramen. All right, time to get started on the ramen noodles. I've got potassium carbonate and salt that I'm just gonna throw into the water, nice and murky, just the way I think we like it. Now I'm just gonna add this to the flour slowly. Well, nothing's exploded yet, so that's that's a good sign. It looks like string cheese, or like skin. <laughs> Bam, one bag of moon sand. Just chill there for a bit. So Daniel just sent me this rotisserie chicken, and there's actually a lot that you can do with it. For ramen, broth is everything. We're gonna use the rotisserie chicken to make a very delicious broth. So the first thing we're gonna do, pull off all the meat from the chicken and separate the skin from the meat. So dough has been resting for half an hour. Feels good, feels like dense. Just gonna try to roll it out in the bag. This is hard work. So I'm happy that I get to use a pasta machine after this. Okay, 
I'm exhausted, so me and this doe are gonna take a 30 minute rest. See you in 30, little guy. We have three different parts of the chicken. We have our chicken meat, our skin, and then the bones for the broth. All right, the ramen noodle saga continues. Yes, it does take time. The dough is still pretty thick. So once your dough is rested, you're gonna run it through the pasta machine to make sheets of noodles. Ooh, okay, all right, all right. Got a little longer there. So I'm just gonna fold it in half and then just run it through again. This is so satisfying. It's looking pretty solid. One setting higher, very delicate. All right, on to three. I feel like the higher the numbers go, the higher my, my heart rate is. And the wings, the meat is already too tough, I feel like, for the topping. This will be great in the broth. So that's three, we're gonna go on to four now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This gets longer and longer, this is not gonna get easier. <laughs> so this is the carcass. You can see here, I'm kind of separating and dismantling the carcass to extract more flavor from the bones. This is ready. I'm just gonna add water to our stock. And we're gonna boil it for about an hour or two. I'll do it one more time. Whoa, whoa. Okay, all right. Yes, this is, I hope, long enough. So this looks like it's gonna be a nice looking noodle, hopefully. I'm gonna trim the ends off so it's nice and square. And I'm just gonna cut it in half so it's a little bit more manageable for me. So I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of cornstarch. Just... The sheets of dough are done. Time to make noodles. For aromatics, for the broth, we wanna build as much flavor as possible. So to the chicken, we're just gonna add some of the scallion. I'm gonna swap this out for my noodler and uh, I'm gonna dust the pan with a little cornstarch just so that when I get the noodles out, it doesn't stick. Ginger, we're just gonna give it a quick chop as well. And I like to leave the skin on because it's stock. I never like to waste anything. I feel good about the sheets. I'm not gonna get too cocky. A new dragon that has to be slayed here. Stay humble. Hoping this goes as smoothly as I think it will. I think I put this in upside down. You see what happens when you start to feel good about yourself? <laughs> this looks better. Okay, let's try this again. Ah, there we go. Oh, snap, there's so many. Okay, uh, whoop. Whoa, look at that. After they come out, I might hit them with a little bit of cornstarch, just put my fingers through it just so they don't stick together. Like I'm shampooing the noodles, almost. Same with garlic. I'm just gonna give it a nice pound to release some flavor. And then same with the ginger. We're gonna leave the skin on, throw it, in the pot with the chicken and let this go for two hours on a rolling boil. Okay, these nests look all right. They look okay, I think. I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap and then just kind of let it chill, let it sit for a bit. So once your noodles are cut, you're just gonna throw it in your fridge and let it rest. You can get away with resting for about an hour or two, but preferably overnight. Okay, chashu pork. Apparently this is like a bit of a process. I'm making like the tar. Tare is a seasoning liquid that goes into ramen. And that's basically what gives the salt to your ramen. For this recipe, we're using the chashu braising liquid as the tare. So it's equal parts excitement and sheer terror. I'm gonna throw my water, my soy, soy sauce. sauce into the pot first. So Mirin's going in now. And to really give this tare a great umami, we're gonna be using the chicken flavor packet in the instant ramen noodles. Now this is like gold. I love this stuff. There's little shiitake mushrooms in here. To that, we're gonna add ginger, ginger and garlic. garlic. Green onion, and then kombu. I'm like really curious as to how this stuff tastes. Hard salty paper. So this will go five minutes. We just really wanna make sure the seasoning packet is well incorporated, extract some of that flavor from the garlic and ginger, and make a really beautiful tare. So while my tare is coming to a simmer, I'm gonna start working on the pork. I sent Daniel a really nice piece of pork belly, which he's gonna roll up into a cylinder, tie it with butcher's twine, and braise it in this beautiful shoyu broth. This looks good, I think. Good old meat log. You guys ever watch Avatar? The Last Airbender. His little flying bison, Appa. That looks like Appa's furryless body. <laughs> and now we're just gonna strain out the ginger and the garlic, and we're ready to roll. There we have it, our beautiful tare. 
So my tare is cooling down on the side. I'm going to start searing the pork belly. There we go. That looks good. I'm gonna turn this off. Get my kombu sheets out of the tare mixture. But then once this is cool, I can start braising. We're gonna be using the scallions, the ginger, and the garlic to make an aromatic oil. So normally I would use some sort of fat to make an aromatic oil because that gives it a nice mouthfeel. But regular oil works too, and we wanna really extract all of the flavors from these three ingredients. So this is a little cooled down now. I'm just gonna add my tare to the pan. Turn this back on. Let's get brazen. By braising it low and slow, we're gonna make this piece of pork so tender. We're also gonna use that braising liquid to flavor our ramen. For the next couple hours, every 15 minutes, I'm gonna be taking this and rotating it. Yeah, this is no joke, ramen takes a long time. No shortcuts. So we're adding the oil, and then we're just gonna turn this on. Medium high heat, we're gonna let that go as we mince our ginger and garlic. Basically what I'm doing is I'm frying the scallion, ginger, and garlic in the oil, and it becomes a little crispy. Not only an oil, but it's also a crispy topping that you can add. Building on texture and flavor all at the same time. Been a couple hours. Bum -bum! Look at that. How nice does that look? Once your chashu is cooked, you wanna take it out of the braising liquid and put it in your fridge to cool. That way it's easier to slice. Got our ginger, I'm peeling it with a spoon. It's the best way to peel ginger so that you don't lose so much of the ginger. And all these scraps, remember, can go in your stock. I don't waste anything in my kitchen. Already, I can smell the infusion of the oil. It's heavenly. This smells so good. Whatever I was smelling before, this is completely ramped up. There's like way more sweet, way more savory. Oh, and it just looks so dark and rich and thick. So first, try to hunt down the shiitake mushrooms because these I'm supposed to save for later on in the recipe. And strain it into a bowl. So you wanna make sure you don't walk away from the pan when you're doing this because it'll go from light brown to dark really quick. It's supposed to add some MSG. Now this does say it's a seasoning that adds uh, umami taste. Ooh, umami. Starting to get nice and light brown. Once you start seeing the color change happening, you wanna take it off the heat. So this is looking beautiful. I'm just gonna strain it to separate the chunks from the oil because I wanna keep the chunks crispy. So here is our beautiful aromatic oil. And then this is our crispy topping that's gonna to give so much texture to this ramen. So I am saving about a cup of this to make my ramen egg, which I'm actually super excited about because this tastes incredible, so I can't even imagine what this tastes like with eggs in it. So Daniel sent me these eggs, and instead of just cracking the egg in the broth, we're gonna be making onsen tamago. Onsen tamago is basically a sous vide egg, but without an immersion circulator. All you need is water. Temperature is really important here. The reason why we're doing four cups of boiling to one cup of cold is because we want that sweet spot of the temperature of 167. So we got two eggs here. It's time to ramenize them. Daniel's gonna be making a classic shoyu ramen egg, which is my favorite. It's a six minute egg that's been marinated in the chashu braising liquid overnight. I'm gonna use a slotted spoon and just ever so gently get these eggs into the boiling water. And then we're just gonna cover it and let this sit for 15 minutes. All right, these have been in here for about six minutes. So now I'm going to take them out, let them sit there, enjoy like a cold pool. Because we want to cool it completely before we crack it. And let's test one out. This is both exciting and nerve wracking at the same time because if it doesn't turn out right, it's always a little frustrating. If it does, it's very exciting. Okay, good, there's one. Oh, perfect. You see how the yolk is still super creamy, but semi-set. And then this, in the ramen broth, it just becomes silky and delicious. In goes the tare. Oof, these are gonna be so good. So the ramen eggs are gonna sit in the fridge for as long as I can leave them in there, ideally like 12 hours plus. We're about ready to put everything together. I'm gonna start with the broth. Broth has been going for about two hours. You can see the carcass is broken down. It's starting to thicken. So we're gonna strain it through a chinois. You wanna use a ladle to kind of push out all of that flavor from the bones. So I sent Daniel my very own bone broth that we make at Mock Bar. 
and it's been going for 48 hours. It's super special. And again, you're welcome, Daniel. Thank you. While that's going, I'm going to start cutting my braised pork belly. It's like disrespectful how good that looks. So now it's time to finish our broth. I wanna add a little bit of body. Since we have eggs, I'm gonna use the yolk to slightly add some creaminess to the broth. And I don't wanna add the eggs directly to the hot broth. I'm gonna slowly temper the egg yolks with the broth so that we don't curdle or cook it. The inspiration behind this is like carbonara. We wanna make sure that it remains really creamy and silky. It's missing a little glaze on the outside, you know? Gotta hit it with the torch! I'm gonna flip these over and do the same thing on the other side. Torching your chashu will not only give it that smoky, crispy layer, but it will also reheat your pork. Yeah. To this mixture, I'm gonna start seasoning it with the tare. Tare, because I love the way this tastes. And then we're gonna add everything back into the broth. So at this point, we're gonna taste. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's perfect. That's delicious. I mean, I feel like you can serve this at ramen restaurants and no one would know it came from a packet. Looks like now I'll be making the aromatic oil. And this is a very important component of ramen. And he's gonna be using chicken fat with a little bit of garlic for that aromatic note. I really don't know much about how aromatic oil is supposed to look or smell. If I eat this at some point, I don't know. So I feel like one of the most fun things about ramen is all of the different toppings that you get on it. So we have our chicken skin, and then we have our chicken meat, and these are gonna be two different toppings used in very different ways. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fry the chicken skin. If you go to a Japanese restaurant, you can even just order the skin separately, and that's the inspiration behind this. skin inspiration. that sounds gross. Okay, when you hear a little sizzle, I think that's ready. I love this idea. I kinda now wanna do this at my restaurant. You know it's done when it kind of holds together like that. Remember that seasoning packet? I'm just gonna sprinkle it on our chicken skin. And then this will really amp up the flavor. As soon as it cools, it's like ultra, ultra crispy. And I can't resist, I'm sorry, but I gotta taste it. Mmm, it's like a really, really good chip. That's gonna be amazing on top of our ramen. I will say, now that it's heating up, it's all sort of like a buttery looking kind of liquid. The garlic is starting to get a little bit soft. We can't just top our ramen with plain chicken. We have to amp up the flavor. So what we're gonna do is use the tare that we made and we're gonna season the chicken. This oil that we use to fry the chicken skin has so much flavor. We're gonna use it to also reheat our chicken meat. You can already see it looks totally different, right? And by doing this, you're just rehydrating the chicken almost. When this slightly caramelizes, that's when it's ready. All right, I'm gonna turn the heat off and take the garlic cloves out. I think my aromatic oil is good to go. It smells good. There'll be a nice little splash of flavor at the end, hopefully. So Daniel sent me sesame seeds, and I feel like this is a great way to add this like creamy element to the ramen. Plain sesame seeds doesn't have that much flavor, but once you toast it, it changes completely. Sesame has a lot of oil in them, and that's what you're trying to release. So now that the sesame seeds are toasted, we're just gonna grind this up and add it to our broth. All right, it's all coming together now. We have a scallion, which we're just gonna slice. The restaurant, we call this sexy scallions. And then the sesame seeds that we toasted, we're just gonna grind it up into a powder. Our last two toppings are ready to go. Just cook our noodles and we're ready to assemble our ramen. Noodle drop time. When you're cooking these fresh ramen noodles, you're gonna cook it in boiling water, not in your broth. And that's because there's a lot of starch in fresh noodles. These look like ramen noodles, this is so cool. You know when they're done, when they're nice and chewy and cooked all the way through. Mm, okay, yep, whoa. So as the noodle cooks, I'm gonna start building the base for the bowl. I'm gonna start with our grounded up sesame seeds. I'm gonna put the broth into this lovely bowl. We'll just add the noodles to the broth. I'm still like very much a novice with my chopsticks. Ah. <laughs> noodles are in the bowl. Now it's all about just assembly, making this look cute and pretty. Starting with our chicken. I'm gonna throw the pork in here. Some of our crispy mixture. The shiitake mushrooms that I cut up. The crispy chicken skin. The menma. I've never tasted this. I don't know what this tastes like. 
Survey says, tastes really good. Next, I'm gonna do the egg. egg. Of course, we have our scallions. Last, Last but not, not least, least aromatic, aromatic oil. oil. This looks pretty good. I really hope this is up to Chef Esther's standards. That looks awesome. And this is my take on Chef Esther's ramen recipe. And this is my take on Daniel's ramen recipe. I'm so excited to taste this. I just wanna nom 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 nom. This looks so good. I'm so shocked that I could make this out of instant ramen and rotisserie chicken. It looks like something you'd order at a restaurant. Can I dive into this? Is that okay? Yeah? Mm. Chef Esther, this is next level. This is so good. It's super creamy. Wow. That tare, best thing I, I may have ever tasted. Oh, and the pork is so tender. I can't wait to see what Chef Esther did with my ingredients. I'm really proud of myself for that. Can't wait to see what Daniel did with my recipe. What's, What's up? up? <laughs> How's it going? Hi. Nice to meet you. Wow. Ooh. I mean, it wow. looks like it came from the same restaurant. I mean, Thank you. <laughs> I could cry. Do you have like a new appreciation now? Oh, for holy, ramen? holy. Yeah. It takes a lot of Love and energy and yeah. all that. Like, you should try. I'm, I'm, I'm curious this. to see. You did these noodles. Look at that chashu. But what I'm really impressed with is the noodles. Look at that. Thank you. It's beautiful. I, I think I'm most proud of the noodles. Wow. Mmm, the mouthfeel from like chicken fat. What do we think? Oh my god. Yeah? <laughs> it has great texture. I mean, it's your recipe. I <laughs> You're only as good as the recipe, right? It's really delicious. The texture is great. The tire oh, chashu. Okay. Mmm. The smokiness from that torch. And I can really taste the tare. So much flavor. This is truly like a really delicious ramen. Thank you. How can long? I try yours? Is that is that allowed? Can do I do it. That? Oh my god. I mean You leveled this up. You're a wizard. That's what we are, no? This is nuts. Good job. Do you, you want to come work at my ramen shop? Yeah, I'm wearing an apron. Let's go. Like, sign me up.